Welcome, fellow recovering traditionalists, to episode 205. Stop coaching everyone. Use the 80 20 rule to transform your elementary math coaching. So, as an elementary math coach, how many times have you felt like you're trying to be everywhere at once? You've got 50 teachers who could all use support, a list of coaching goals as long as your arm, and never enough time to make the impact that you really want to make. Well, today, I want to share something that can change how you approach your coaching, and it's going to save you time while actually increasing your impact. It's called the 80-20 Principle. And once you understand how to apply it to your math coaching, you're going to wonder why you were trying to do everything for everyone. Welcome to Build Math Minds, the podcast, where fidelity to your students is greater than fidelity to your textbook. I'm your host, Christina Tonnevold, the recovering traditionalist and buildmathminds.com founder, where my mission is to change the way we teach elementary math to our kiddos. So are you ready to start building math minds and not just creating calculators? Let's get started. So first, what is the 80-20 rule? It was first noticed by Vilfredo Pareto when he observed that 80% of his peas came from just 20% of his pea pods. And just so you know, there is other versions of what Pareto found, but the pea pod example is the most commonly used one. Since then, this principle has been found everywhere. Microsoft discovered that 80% of their tech issues came from about 20% of the bugs in their software. So instead of trying to fix every single bug, they focus on those crucial 20%. The idea is pretty simple. If we can focus on the things that will produce the most results, that's a much better use of our time than trying to focus on everything. And in coaching, this means identifying what Dr. Joseph Jaron called the vital few, instead of getting caught up in the trivial many. Because you know, there's a lot of those, right? Let's be honest about what you're facing as math coaches. Looking at everything on your plate, you've got teachers at different experience levels, different comfort zones with mathematics, and even different willingnesses to change. You've got curriculum implementation, assessment support, lesson planning help, classroom management issues, and on and on. And here's the thing. You probably feel like you need to help every teacher with every possible area of growth. But if we try to focus on everything, what tends to happen is that it's all just really surface level help and no one gets the deep support they really need to transform their practice. So here's how the 80-20 principle becomes game changing for coaching. First, let's talk about how it helps prioritize which teachers to work with. Because reality is, you can't coach them all in a deep and powerful way. Now, I know that you might be thinking, well, what if it looks like I'm playing favorites? I need to help everyone equally. But here's the thing. Strategic prioritization isn't about playing favorites or like you're neglecting struggling teachers. It's about being smart with your limited time to create the biggest positive impact across your entire school or district. When you focus your intensive coaching on that 20% of teachers who will make the biggest change and influence others, you're actually creating a ripple effect that reaches way more students than if you spread yourself thin across everyone. So how do you identify that crucial 20%? I want you to look for key characteristics, and I've got two that I tend to look for. Number one is their eagerness to learn and change. These are the teachers who are constantly asking you questions and who will say yes when you suggest trying something new and who are willing to reflect on their practice. They might not be your strongest teachers yet, but they have this growth mindset and they're ready and eager to learn. Second, and I feel like this is a huge one that we don't often look at, is to look for teachers who are seen as leaders by their colleagues. 
These are the ones that other teachers go to for advice. They speak up constructively in team meetings. When they try something new, other people notice and they want to know more about what that teacher is doing. You can spot these teacher leaders by observing who gets approached for help during planning time, who others reference positively in their conversations, and who just naturally influences the culture and practices around them. Now, the second way to apply 80-20 is in deciding what to coach on. Not just who, but what. Just like with addition and multiplication facts, if you've heard me talk about that before, There are certain foundational items that carry more weight than others, and this is true even when you're coaching. Your 20%, your vital few coaching topics should be foundational instructional moves that will last the test of time. Things like helping teachers understand the power of number routines and how to implement them, getting students talking more about their mathematical thinking, helping teachers learn how to facilitate learning as students are solving more open-ended problems, and asking the right questions to truly understand what students are thinking. These are just a few examples of moves that will serve teachers no matter what curriculum comes and goes in their lives and no matter what grade level they end up teaching next year. When you help a teacher get really good at facilitating mathematical discourse, for example, that skill transfers to to every single lesson that they will teach from here on out. Now compare that to what often kind of happens in coaching time, and I've even done this myself, is we end up spending time helping teachers like evaluate their textbook or modify one particular lesson to ensure that they're covering the standards the way that they're supposed to be. Now, that might feel important at the moment, but here's the problem. In a few years, when they adopt a new curriculum, you'll have to do the same work all over again with that same teacher. But when you coach on those foundational moves, how to ask questions that reveal student thinking, how to build number sense through routines, how to create classroom culture where mistakes are learning opportunities, that coaching pays dividends year after year after year. And here's the beautiful thing about applying 80-20 to your coaching. It actually saves you time in the long run. When you focus on developing teachers' deep understanding of mathematics and those foundational instructional moves, you're building their capacity to make good decisions on their own. Instead of being the person that they come to for every little curriculum question or lesson planning dilemma, you've equipped them to evaluate and improve their own practice. The coaching you do today won't have to be redone in a few years because you focused on what truly matters and what truly lasts. So here's what I want you to do after watching this video or listening to the podcast, whichever way you're, you're getting this information. I want you to make two lists. First, list all the teachers that you could potentially work with this year, and then identify the 20% who are showing eagerness to learn, who have influence with their colleagues. These are going to become your priority teachers, the ones where you invest your most intensive coaching time. This doesn't mean you're ignoring everybody else, but you're strategic about where you put your deepest energy. Second, write down a list of the topics you're currently coaching teachers on or planning to coach on. Look at them and ask yourself, Is this a foundational instructional move that will serve this teacher for years to come? Or is this something that's specific to this moment, this curriculum, this particular situation? And it's not to say that those don't get still addressed, right? But that shouldn't take up 80% of your coaching time. The 80% of your coaching time should be on those strong foundational instructional moves. 20% can be on those other things that they are dealing with because they're still important to those teachers. But don't let that take up 80% of your time. Focus your coaching conversations on that vital 20% that will have lasting impact and watch how much more effective and sustainable your coaching becomes. The goal isn't to just do more coaching. It's to do coaching 
that matters more. Until next week, my fellow recovering traditionalists, keep letting your students explore math, keep questioning, and most importantly, keep building math minds. And that goes for coaches as well. You're focusing on letting your teachers explore math, keep them questioning, and build their math minds so they can build the math minds of their students.